Back in version.115, Home Assistant added modes to automations. These new modes gave us more control over our automation flows. So in this video, I want to cover how these new modes work, talk through some of the potential uses, and modify some of my existing automations so they work better. So stick around because we're about to automate some boring stuff. What's up everyone? Welcome to Slacker Labs. If this is your first time here, my name is Jeff, and here at Slacker Labs, we look for ways to automate the boring stuff using Home Assistant. This video is a bit late, because these new modes I want to talk about were added in version .115, which at the time of this video was two major versions ago. But I think these modes, at least some of them, may improve our automation flow, and they have the potential of reducing complexity. And who doesn't want that? So let's walk through how I'm planning to use these new modes and modify some of my current automations. But before we get to tinkering, let's talk about options. These new modes add the ability to define what happens when your automation gets triggered, or more specifically, what happens when they get trigger spammed. Like when someone paces in front of a motion sensor or you rage push that button on your dashboard to get your Jarvis audio to play for your YouTube video. You may not have paid much attention to these new modes when they came out because the use cases in which an automation is going to get trigger spammed is pretty limited. But prior to this, if an automation got triggered again while it was running, you had no control over what happened, and in some cases I think the automation just stopped before completing. The first is single mode, and it's the default option when you start a new automation. Single mode means that once it gets triggered, it'll ignore all the other triggers while it's still running. It will issue a warning to your log file every time it gets triggered, but this can be suppressed by setting the max exceeded attribute to silent, which may be useful if it's an automation that might get triggered a lot. In my opinion, this is the mode that will get used the most, which, since it's the default mode, probably goes without saying. One of the benefits of single mode is it allows you to put in a cooldown for your automations which is perfect when your kid decides to feed the birds by pouring bird seed on the front porch under the camera that triggers an audible notification every time it senses motion. Prior to having the single mode, I used an input boolean that I would turn on when an automation fired, and then I would add a delay to the end of the automation that would turn that input boolean off, and then I would add a condition to that automation that if the input boolean was on, that it shouldn't continue with the automation. <laughs> this is much simpler. To save the sanity of the people in this house, we can add a cooldown to my audible notification that there's motion at the front door. Now, this automation typically lives in my security.yaml or my security package, but since you can't edit that via the UI, I moved this automation over to the automations.yaml so I could edit it in the UI and walk you through it. In this automation for motion at the front door, we will leave the mode single. This triggers when there's motion from the Arlo camera, and I get this using a Hacks or Home Assistant Community Store add-on that improves the Arlo integration. As with all my Audible notifications, we make sure that the Audible notifications are allowed. And for this one, we make sure that the front door isn't open so that we don't announce it just because we're walking outside. Since I'm using random announcements, this action had to be as YAML, which you could edit from here. If you didn't know, at any time you add one of these elements, you could choose to edit it as YAML. This saves you a trip to the configuration file if you want to get complex. But since we want to limit how many times this fires, we just add a delay as the last action and set it to two minutes. The next mode is restart. If you want your automation to stop and restart every time it gets triggered, this is the mode you will want to use. I think this mode might be best when you have something that needs to wait for a period of time before the automation completes. For example, I have an Accurite lightning sensor on my deck that enables Home Assistant to know when lightning is near. There's also a lightning sensor integration via the Hacks or Home Assistant Community Store that you can add to your Home Assistant to get the same type of data. But I found that my lightning detection was more accurate without the cloud. In my weather package, you can find all my current weather sensors and automations. I'll put a link in the description to the package on GitHub for those that want to check it out. 
I plan on doing a video on how I've integrated all of my local weather sensors, but today I want to focus just on the lightning warning off automation. My current notification that lightning is in the area fires when lightning has been detected within 25 miles, and then after no lightning has been detected for 20 minutes, another notification says that it's all clear. Previously, this was done using a lightning warning input boolean that was tied to a static delay. Once it turned on, an automation would turn it off after 20 minutes, regardless of whether there was more lightning, which during a storm might mean that it gives an all clear when lightning was still occurring. Restart mode makes this automation more efficient. Now all the logic is contained in the warning off automation. If another lightning strike has been detected while this is waiting for its 20 minute delay, the delay simply starts over. As you can see, I've already set this mode to restart. And since I want the lightning to be clear, I'm using the for attribute set for 20 minutes. That means this trigger has to be true for 20 minutes before this automation continues. This is a small change, but it means that I won't get any false clears. Next up is queued, and it works exactly like it sounds. When an automation is triggered while it's still running in this mode, a new instance just queues up behind that one so that as soon as the current one stops running, the next instance runs. I have a notification that I stole from Carlo over at vCloud Info that announces when people arrive. The way this one works is anytime someone arrives, the automation waits for them to open the laundry room door and then announces that they've arrived using a randomized announcement. The one thing I've wanted to improve is that when multiple people arrive, it only ever announces the first person that triggered the automation because it's waiting for the laundry room door to open. And in that time, everybody else that was with them has been marked home. Carlo may have already solved this and I just haven't kept up, but this mode I think can help accomplish the same thing. This welcome home automation lives in my presence package. I'll link to it in the description and I'm using the file editor add-on to modify it. Here, we just need to switch the mode to queued. And I'll comment out the wait template watching the laundry room door since most likely no matter how many people arrive, the door should only open once. And to ensure that the people are inside to hear the announcement, we'll add a delay of two minutes. With the queued mode, you're going to want to control how many instances you queue up and you can do that with the max option which defaults to 10. Here, I will set the max option to 4 since at most I will have 4 triggers. And the last mode is parallel mode. You would use this mode if you had an automation where it made sense to have multiple instances running at the same time. But honestly, I can't think of a use case in which I would use this mode in my current setup. I did work up an example, although I haven't tested it yet, but I did crunch the numbers. There's a 32.33, uh, repeating of course, chance that it will work. Let's say everyone arriving wants different lighting to be on. So we start out by triggering when any one of three people arrive. Then we just need some routing logic to handle which scene we turn on. I'm using the scene turn on service here. Then I have some code that gets the name of the person that triggered the automation. And then some logic to determine which scene is called. I'm not sure how practical this example would be. It's very possible that it turns into a fight over lighting when people come home. And this is a bad illustration of the benefits for parallel over queued since either one of those modes would essentially deliver the same results in this automation. But I hope that at least it triggers some ideas. If you want to use this mode, you're again going to want to control how many you have running at the same time. And you can do that with the max option, which defaults to 10, which sounds like an insane amount of instances running at the same time. Modes really do add some much needed control to automations in Home Assistant. I'm also really curious how my fellow automators are going to leverage these modes in their Home Assistant setups. So if you have some unique use cases for these modes that I haven't talked about, leave it in the comments or hit me up on Twitter so I can go steal it. If you like this video, give me the finger by clicking that thumbs up so I know it wasn't all bad and consider subscribing to my channel for more home automation content. It's free, which means you don't have to give up that prized subscription to your favorite channel, just add mine. If I got something wrong or you have questions about something I said, let me know in the comments or hit me up on Twitter at the Jeffrey Stone. And as always, thanks for taking time out of your home automation projects to watch mine. Until next time, automate the boring stuff. <laughs>